Hi, I'm Greg Dell with Dell Disability Lawyers here with attorney Stephen Jessup and we're going to do some frequently asked questions and this week we're going to talk about MetLife Disability Appeals and these particular questions are obviously focused on appeals and we'll go through them back and forth mm -hmm. and then you know, as we're, at, as we're answering them, provide some tips for people that should hopefully help them with MetLife. Also, we have tons of answer questions on our website where we invite people to ask their questions or the easiest way is just call any of us and of course we'll provide a free initial consultation, answer any questions they may have. So, when it comes to MetLife disability appeals, one of the biggest questions we always get are, can these appeals be won and how often do you see them being won? I mean, they can. Definitely they can be won. Uh, every case is going to be nuanced and different. You know, we always talk about that there are certain, you know, steps insurance companies kind of take to deny claims. You see a lot of similarities in it, um, but every case is ultimately different based on what the occupational language is and what the disabling condition, uh, you know, is for the person. But, you know, certainly these can be won, but it does take a, a pretty large concerted effort in being able to, you know, supplement any additional information into the appeal um, you know, to give yourself the best chance. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to give statistics on how many times you win them and how many times you don't. I find that if you do have strong support from a doctor, uh, along with good medical documentation, and, and especially if, you know, new stuff's created during the appeal, your chances of success are going to be much greater. You know, unfortunately, the cases where we get where doctors don't want to really do much or they don't want to add anything to, or, you know, sometimes when we see it in a denial letter, uh, you read it and it says that, you know, the treating physician agreed with MetLife's doctors. Well, those cases are going to be, you know, much harder to win. Not to say impossible, but, you know, certainly more difficult. A lot of people call you on the phone, they talk to you for a couple of minutes and they say, what do you think are my chances of winning? How do you, how do you usually answer that question or, and are you able to give a percentage chance of winning? It's, it's so hard and you know, at the end of the day, it's 50-50. You're going to win, you're going to lose. There's only two options with it. I think the, the bigger question, if we look at it from a 30,000 foot view, um, based on how ERISA as a body of law is going to work and you know, options for someone, the likelihood of them getting paid something is going to be exceedingly high, right? You know, we know that if you file a lawsuit, uh, if they deny the appeal, you file a lawsuit, MetLife is going to, you know, require mediation to try to settle the case. Um, so I can tell people, as long as they persist and pursue, and there's actual benefits to be had in the policy, you know, it's not limited by something where the case may be, you can prevail in that aspect of it. Um, the appeal rate, though, it's very, very tough. Now, once we start to get more, you know, that initial call, you know, it's hard to say, you know, when we see the denial letter and we see, oh, this is what I think we need to add, then those chances and, you know, discussions can certainly increase, you know, the odds of that happening. How long should a person expect that it's going to take to prepare an appeal that you would submit against MetLife? Well, they give you 180 days to submit an appeal. Um, it's a lot of time when you don't have money coming in, but it's not a lot of time when you think about how many years the policy may be worth. And you're only going to have one opportunity. MetLife only gives one level of appeal as required by the law. They don't have a voluntary appeal process. So this is your last opportunity to submit. Um, I try to get them out as soon as I possibly can. And that's contingent on getting the information from the doctors, getting additional testing, any additional questionnaires from doctors. Um, that can take time. But if, if things are organized early on, um, realistically, we might be able to get an appeal well prepared, one out in three months. I think it's good to mentally say hey, it's going to take the six months just so you're in a frame of, of reference and a, a mindset of how long it may take. You know, I tell people too, like, listen, even if you filed your appeal on your own today, MetLife's going to have up to 90 days to make a decision. They can sit on that for three months. Um, so you really, it, it's, it's yes, it's horrible when the money's not coming in that amount of time, but if, say, you're, you're 50, you're looking at potentially 15 years of benefits. 180 days isn't that much, especially when it's your last opportunity. So we tell people worst case scenario, expect that it could be nine months, um, but usually in the range of six to nine months from the time you know we're hired, we submitted an appeal and there's a decision made, it's gonna be usually six to nine months. Uh, a lot of people call you and understandably they're like, can you file my appeal in two weeks? Mm -hmm. Certainly, if someone has a deadline in two weeks, yes, absolutely, we have, we have to because if you don't file in that 180 days, then you're you're done. You're, you'll never have your appeal considered by law. But if someone under a normal set of circumstances has, where time is not an issue, they have mm -hmm. you know uh, four or five or six months mm -hmm. remaining. Why is it a bad idea to immediately rush and go ahead and file an appeal within? A, 
two days or yeah. three days. You know, going back to your question, can I? I, I can. Would I? No. Um, you know, you get the one opportunity. So anything you may want a judge to consider has to be in your appeal. This is your last bite at the apple. Uh, so I always tell people to understand the importance of the appeal, you have to understand the importance of the litigation. And your appeal is really setting the framework for anything you may have to argue to a judge. The purpose of the appeal is, is really realistically get the client to, to money. First, get them on claim. Second, if MetLife's going to toe the line and deny it, give them the best chance of success in front of a judge. And then even three, knowing that federal courts are going to you know, have the attorney sit down and mediate the case, the more risk that MetLife has in the case, the more money and valuation on the policy. So all of that, though, any opportunity for that client ever getting paid or seeing money again is all based on the preparation of the appeal. So unless you have to because of a deadline thing, you really want to take the time. And I think a lot of clients, yes, they're, they're, they're you know, nervous, they're upset, they're angry about what's going on. But once they kind of see the bigger picture, they under, really understand what's at stake. And, you know, the reason why we always stress this, this point about taking your time and submitting a good appeal is because I feel like a lot of claimants, whether it's MetLife or any other company, are misled. And they think this mm -hmm. is a situation where, like, I'll just say, dumb it down. Like, you're at a restaurant and you don't like something, and then um, you say, well, can I talk to the manager? And then the manager comes over and you think the manager is gonna smooth over mm -hmm. the situation. And a lot of claims reps at the initial level when they place that phone call to you and say, hey, I'm sorry to tell you we're denying your claim, they'll say, but you can just go ahead and appeal and someone else is gonna mm -hmm. look at it. Mm -hmm. And they make it seem like you it's write easy. a let they make it seem like you're gonna write a letter and say, I got denied, I'd like you to please reconsider um, my claim because I'm no longer able to work and that's it. And we've seen that, you know, one out of every two times, mm -hmm, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's scary because that is a, that will almost never get your claim reversed. And that becomes your appeal. Mm -hmm. And then when you have to file a lawsuit, which people call us and ask us to file a lawsuit in that factual pattern, we're married to what was done before him because no additional evidence was submitted. So. It's very scary situation mm -hmm. that MetLife makes it like, hey, just go ahead and ask. Someone else is going to look at it and maybe they'll reverse it and it's not a big deal. But it is a big deal for all the reasons you talked about that you have to put in this extensive yeah. appeal, which we're saying as professionals is going to take us 90 days to do it the right way. And of course, you know, we have other videos where we talk about how to file an appeal, MetLife disability appeals, tons of summaries, all kinds of information about that, but the best way still is for someone to say, hey, send us your appeal denial letter, we'll look at it. We'll even lay out a roadmap for you, give you suggestions and ideas and let you know how we can help you. All right, so the, the, you submit an appeal for a claimant. We've all heard about video surveillance. Should a claimant who, once an appeal has been submitted, should they expect that they could be under video surveillance? I think it's always a good idea to expect that there may be. Um, more often than not, any video surveillance is done prior to the denial. You know, that's when you usually see it, not necessarily during the appeal process, but it can happen. I think what's more important for them to be cognizant of, um, more and more insurance companies are doing social media. They're just going online and seeing what they can find and what right. you're posting. Um, so you can expect that is certainly during the appeal, you may be surveilled. Um, but you can almost guarantee that they're going to be also looking at your online presence and what you might be posting, any social media or something like that. All right. Once you submit the, the appeal, a disability appeal specialist or whatever they call them at, at MetLife is going to review the file. What does that person rely upon in order to make their final decision as to whether or not they're going to upheld the denial or reverse the denial? Ultimately, in a lot of ways, it's like what the claims person who initially denied the claim. You know, they're going to rely and they're going to look at the information that's submitted with the appeal, any of the new medical opinions of doctors, but they're also going to have, you know, their own independent doctors do a file review of it. Um, so ultimately, you know, we see it unfortunately can happen that they just, you know, ignore someone's treating doctors and rely on their own doctor's opinions as to you know what restrictions and limitations may be and sometimes you even get into this really weird situation where you know you can prove present disability but they're arguing well you we, we determined you weren't disabled eight months ago so what's happening now wasn't relevant at the time of the denial so there's a lot of ways that they can try to twist it in the appeals department that's why 
overwhelming them with information pertinent to the issues, undermining their doctors' opinions who initially denied the claim and things like that. You really need to go far into that. And then, in my personal opinion, also really rely on facts. You know, not so much like attacking what was done and arguing this and that, because at the end of the day, it might be in-house doctors at MetLife who are looking at it, and you don't want to necessarily accuse them of all these, these things. You want to present the information you know, as detailed clearly and almost make it seem like with the appeals department, hey, claims just got it wrong, you know, wasn't like malicious, even though sometimes it really seems like mm -hmm. it was. Just really present a, a clear roadmap that when anyone reads it and sees the information, they go, oh, well, yeah, we should be paying this claim. Um, but ultimately, that appeals manager could just easily rely on the opinions of the doctors they hire. And is it enough under the law for MetLife to just hire a doctor or use an in-house employed mm -hmm. doctor to do a paper review without even examining the claimant and then make their decision on appeal based upon that evidence alone? Unfortunately, yes. You know, even though the policy has the right uh, for them to send you to an independent medical evaluation, the case law out there is, is that it's not a requirement. Just because they have the right to, they don't have to. They can rely on um, in-house doctors, doctors hired outside, and they don't have to give any additional weight to your treating physicians as opposed to the opinions of doctors who've never seen you and maybe never even spoken to your doctors. Now, when you win your appeal, does MetLife have to pay your attorney fees? No. No. So, you know, a lot of times people ask, you know, I've, I've, I was behind on my mortgage, I lost my house, these various different damages, we'll call them. Uh, MetLife's not responsible for those. You know, if you win your appeal, the only thing they have to do is pay you the, the money owed to that point. Um, they don't have to pay your attorney's fees, any pain and suffering, nothing like that. Even if they deny the claim and you go into litigation, they're not on the hook for those things, maybe attorney's fees. Uh, that's why I tell people when you really understand what the risk to MetLife is under a claim like this, you can see they've got nothing to lose because th their worst day may just be paying you the money they owe you. So why not take the shot to see if they can get you to go away and save themselves a lot of money in the long run? And I know because of the fact that um, MetLife doesn't pay attorney's fees and also people when they come to us, they're, they're not getting mm -hmm. any income, they're in a huge financial burden that we offer a contingency fee agreement for these appeals, which means that we don't get paid anything unless we win their appeal. So that's very helpful mm -hmm. for these claimants. And because of that, we're very vested in these claims. We evaluate the risk and then we put our heart and soul into them because we immediately become like a partner in the claim. Yeah. So what's personal to them becomes personal to us because we're not getting paid unless they're getting paid. Yeah. So it's a, um, it's a very healthy relationship between us and the client and it drives our passion to not only help them but make sure they're getting paid as well, we're both unified on the same front. So um, for people out there with MetLife, feel free to call Steven, myself, any of our disability lawyers. We'll always provide you with an immediate free phone consultation. No matter where you live in the country, we're available to assist you.